Our commander for the Ryusho. More faster, healthier, base 9 point build. Additional torpedo throughput, because we may be torping into cruisers or battleships. This is the largest source of damage on the Japanese line. Sight stab, not necessarily because the Ryuzhou needs it, but because it does help the Japanese line in general. Just kind of fits with their personality. And then outside of that, some additional fighter consumables, as well as some additional boost. Um, we'll unlock this stuff as we go, but as far as upgrades, just pick the plain one. Pick the plane one and then I think it comes down to additional torpedo speed because I don't care about secondary batteries and I don't need additional attack time although I do have to wonder if this modification as you fly lower to the water to avoid flak which could be interesting if that's true um, I'll have to test that in a training room sometime and I'll take additional torpedo health because this is going to be the mainstay of our damage in terms of flags and stuff We'll do that. I think I'm going to get Flood Flags just because, holy shit, it's anemic. Um, plus, we're going to be working with stock planes, which are pretty tough. Um, where was this contributor thing? This? Yeah, 150. We'll do that. We'll move up to the Ryuzhou. Why is there a star next to your first upgrade? Because I have uh, the... If you have an armory upgrade, um, the armory upgrades, you pay coal for them and they, they do things that are not normal. I have a damage con upgrade that's from the armory, so the star signifies, hey, you've got a special upgrade here if you want to use it. That's all. There's nothing magic about the upgrade we picked. We just picked the basic one. What do I recommend for the Max Immelman build? Uh, so if we go to the YouTube channel and we search for Max Immelman, here's the Commander Bill Commander and Upgrades. So you can check that out. It should give you what you're looking for. General Quarters. So stock plane's kind of rough. We'll see what we can do. Dropping this to ward the caps against uh, destroyers coming in. It's also going to give us some spotting. This could be bad. Maybe it works. Not well. You shoot four rockets total across the planes. Ugh. Back out with rockets again. Minikaze, double DD. How long do regrinds usually take? Uh, depends on how many special flags I have. Um, I think the fastest I did was about 15 hours on the British line, but that was like with lots of, uh, you know, high experience camo as well as using lots and lots of special flags. Um, on a more normal thing where we're not really using special flags, we don't have the 200 or 400 percent XP camos. Uh, probably more something like 20 to 25 hours. I don't know where the 
I think the Hatsuhara is also in the smoke. Alright, well, I think I just need to, um... Just do something. Oh my god. Whatever. We're not doing this. I think these ha these are like the uh, tier 4 planes and they've got a different attack animation. It's the second time I've like overshot. It's been weird. So just we'll go on the Koenig and see if we can do something useful here. Concentrate fire on the designated target. Assume this guy's gonna get pummeled. There's just too many things to shoot him for it not to happen. And then they move to the Hatsu, I guess. But I think the Hatsu is playing better than the T. Do we? Can we make this? He's not stopping. Oh, he's stopping now. Well, slowing down, rather. We did get to see the Minikaze, which is useful. Deal damage to things. Feels so different. It's pretty bad. I might be able to bomb this. Inakazi's still sharking around. Kongo is pushing. Hatsu's not dead. Hatsu's probably in smoke. Kongo's dead to torps. I don't know why the Bertong is freaking out. Oh, because he's low health. Dead to torps. But that's gonna be right for the drops. Go for the Fuso. Keep the Minikaze lit for now. Citadels. Do we get more citadels though? New Mexico's out of range. We might be able to catch the line on this, but. Oh, this is pretty rough. I don't know. Maybe? Maybe? We did drop with two. Minikaze finished his alpha. I don't know what this dude's doing. Auto Strange. Minikaze smoke, so we don't have shots on that. Uh, Torps, probably, for the New Mexico Fuso. Yeah, it just keeps th he's just throwing his shit away. What the fuck are you doing, dude? How does the Parzival do, in your opinion, compared to the Lexington Kaga in terms of power? Uh, I find the Kaga to be weak if it's against an opponent that is able to maneuver, because Japanese stuff needs long attack lines to strike. Um, Lexington is more versatile. She doesn't quite have as much mm, threat, I guess, as the uh, Aga's Torps, maybe? But she's got a lot of very continuous plane uh, strikes that are going to add up to some oof. Um, in terms of the Parzival, Parzival can be an extreme threat depending on the ships it comes across. Swing out this way, come back in. When the Parzival is able to Citadel cruisers, it's an extreme threat. When the Parzival is able to Citadel battleships, it is an extreme threat. When it is not able to do either of those things, it is very weak. And you have no control over what ships you're going to find yourself against. So sometimes it can be extremely frustrating to play the Parzival when you don't have access to citadels, which is your victory condition. I think we go out to the Fuso again. Yeah, we need to claim that. Minikaze is coming up. There's no DD over here. I don't think... Well, we might be able to pen the New Mexico with, like, the... The upgraded stuff. I don't know if we can with the base, but we were able to pen this the Fuso, so we'll try to go after that again. We're losing out in the south pretty bad. Please turn. Maybe. 
Copy. Destination reached. Autopilot mode disabled. I was doing some S Ben stuff. Nope. Strike again. We lose a plane, but I think we get to go in with one. Roz is not dead. Roz, how much health on the Breton? Whatever. 16, I see. So it sucks that the Fuso is still alive and doing, alive and kicking. He goes down to fire. Might be able to trim this off. It's destroyer in Autopilot mode in Delta. Does he live? He lives for now. Continues to live. I hit this guy for probably 8k, so, well, he's definitely dead now. He should eat at least one of these. If he eats both, he's definitely dead. It gets... Battleship destroyed. Is that dude off of him? Still got some health. Not on fire. If we were able to plant two into the Furutaka, that would be pretty significant, but he actually slows down because he knows... We can't torp through the island. Whatever, just bail. New Mexico? Minikaze. Minikaze smokes. We could work on the Furutaka with rockets. We might get out to get another heal. But shells in. Overshot. reached autopilot mode disabled all forces capture that area and work on the furataka and try and get this uh try to get at least the shells off of Ross. we still have to deal with the planes one more shot that's pretty shit Damn it. Mm. Here we go. Unupgraded planes are sadness. He's healing. He'll be okay. He jukes that. Start moving up. Might have to deal with Leander. Capture that area. Caps would be good. This guy's still off and... Whatever. Admiral dude was, yeah, he was in New Mexico that had no way to deal with a destroyer because destroyers are undetectable if there's nothing to help. Alright, so we nailed that. Do we have this shot? We might have this shot. Roz has that shot. Need to wait this out so we can go in on the Minikaze. Speaking of, I have to back up because of the Minikaze. How almost dead is the Ranger? Slings. Fighter airborne. Like 4k or like 10k? Okay, 5. That's a Torp Strike. We have to deal with the Minikaze though. What the fuck? Why would he shoot? Hey, I'm over here! Are you sure about that, bro? You sure about that five minutes? You sure about that five minutes? Aoba comes around the corner pretty soon. Shells in the air. Go for the Ranger. Enemy destroyer. 
He might have torped us. We're not gonna eat 35,000 in torp threat though. Ah, 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 ah. Staying alive. Staying alive. Ah, ah. We should be able to torp the ranger. That'll be a kill. Yeah. Do we die? We got oofed, we got oofed, we got oofed even more. Well, now I definitely have to fuck off because of the Leander. Sad times. And Akazi could just gun this down. A little pre drop here. Raz is shooting the Leander. Well, I hope. Otherwise, this trip's for nothing. Roz is dead. That's a kill. Rockets for the Leander. Enemy aircraft carrier sunk. If this dude would have gotten Bravo like fucking five minutes ago, we'd be done with this by now. Problem solved, sir. Can Citadel the Ranger with rockets? I mean, I guess, but these rockets are not great. And no, I can kill him with torps, so. Comes over the other side of the island. Yeah. And getting dunked by an Aoba. He turns. Jukes torps. Battle ends in five minutes. No. Don't have that, but we don't have to worry. Well, shouldn't have to worry anymore. I don't know, you know? If the Oba goes down, and the Minikaze, Minikaze derps, then that would give them a point lead with four minutes left. No, he's still... We've got him, right? Maybe not. <laughs> I think the Leander might have a heal? Maybe it doesn't, I don't remember. Because we'll torp him and he's just gonna turn, so... Does have a heal. Sad times. Hey, newbie. Well, I upload the whole regrind as a single YouTube vid. So, I've already up uploaded regrind streams for every nation. Uh, I just upload them in sessions. So, if it's a seven hour session, I upload seven hours. If it's a two hour session, I upload two hours. Maybe? You can angle to me, but you're gonna get hurt by him. You are the last hope. Go away. You went away. Enemy cruiser sunk. You've seen the MVR one? You haven't seen the other one? And <laughs> we did something. What is this? Um, what am I doing? So, if you go to uh, the YouTube thing, you can search regrind if you want. That's one way to do it. And you'll get all sorts of different regrind streams. There's German, US. I guess uh, that's the old naming convention. KSC Flight Instructor. Whatever, I suppose I could change that. Or you can look for... In playlists... Regrind streams right here. So there's a playlist of them that's going to contain it all as well. Because, I mean, the amount of crap that I shove up to the YouTube channel is kind of like prohibitive. There's a lot of stuff. So I do try to make sure that... Uh, oh, wait. Do we have access to... Uh, we do. What do we upgrade first? The rockets double, which would be nice. Twice as many rockets, although they're not going to be as accurate. Do they have better pen? I don't think they do. 
No. Okay. Torps increase 1100 whatever. We get more of them. They regen faster. Yada yada. Big, big upgrade there. And the bombs are going to have better pen. Which matters, I mean. Uh, the Torps are the best one to upgrade first, but if we have to deal with destroyers, we need rockets that are not terrible. So we will go with the rocket planes and look for the Torps next. Well, Torps are best if I'm striking um, cruisers and battleships. Although, technically, uh, both of our div guys are in DDs, so we probably don't have to worry about DDs this much, so maybe we should have gotten the Torps. Because the Torps will allow us to attack other things better. One thing I do need to do is uh, go through the old videos and clean up the naming conventions so they all kind of make sense. Yes, but if you get up tiered, you're kind of useless. Battle starts. You talking about the torps? I mean, it's a difference of like 20 health, eight knots, which is not sig which is significant, and 1100 damage. So instead of doing 5,000, it's doing basically 6,000 damage. I mean, it's more. Is that the difference between being relevant and irrelevant? No. But it's more. I mean, Torps are kind of the lifeblood of the uh, Japanese line, so in general you would want to uh, increase the torpedoes anyway. But, if I'm dealing with cruisers that are very maneuverable that I cannot torp, um, the only reason we got Torps on the Leander was because he was responding to somebody else's Torps then you need rocket planes to be able to strike that until they get nerfed <laughs> and then it won't matter rockets or torps it'll be all be the same fighter airborne four dds did you see the hatsu that's actually kind of scary Good news is the Ranger's rocket planes do not turn very well, so... Potentially, if the uh, Ranger does spot him in the T-61, he might be able to get away with some shit. Glad we upgraded the rockets! <laughs> Whatever. They dive into a smoke cloud. Cool. Come out with torps. Aw. Uh, we did set a fire on the Ismail. If he puts that out. Well, it's Russian though, so he's gonna have that fast cycling shit. Please don't need a torp. Live. Be wary of isolating yourself against a ranger. Although the rocket planes are not a threat, you do still have bombers and... German uh, aerial detection tends to be pretty shitty at like three kilometers. Autopilot mode enabled. So just heads up on that. He beached. Okay, random glitch thing. He's down. Yeah. Uh, I think I just have to bail. So, oh well. Hmm, Ismail? Can probably Citadel the Ismail. But we might actually need to be going for the... Bongo? Autopilot mode enabled. Hmm. That's gonna hurt. 
Or maybe not? Single Citadel with a Congo. We can go back in for another. Single Citadel, Congo's too far away to assist, but we still have the ability to drop a single bomb. Maybe. Again, maybe not. Maybe. Maybe. It's another single citadel. The Steris versus, well, Raz will kill him, so we don't have to worry about that. We can worry about staying on the battleships. Thanks again for your tips on Destroyer. You just had your best DD game so far after trying to apply what you said. Fuck yeah, Lotux. I'm not a DD main, but I mean, I do play the class, and... There was a point where I was in a ranked season and like I stalled out. Like I, I was having decent games in the DD, it's just I stalled and I decided no matter what I'm doing, it doesn't matter, don't die. I don't care if I do any damage in the entire game, do not die because just the fact that I'm alive makes the enemy play differently. And if I try to rush or make a play or do something like that and it just uh, doesn't go my way, because it doesn't always go your way, suddenly everything changes. Without having me as a DD on their team or, well, having a DD, the enemy gets to push and exploit and do everything different. You get one torp. Have fun, man. DDs are the best class. Just got, just got a Confederate Kraken and High Caliber in one match. Woohoo! Good shit, Brayden. Uh, that does not work out. We can Citadel this. I don't know about Citadel in the New Mexico. U.S. U.S. ships are kind of trolly for Citadel stuff. Definitely move forward. Autopilot mode enabled. Up the engine boost. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Uh, Our team has taken the lead. I will try the New Mexico. If I don't get Citadels, I'll probably just bail back to Torps. But after this game, we'll have the upgraded Torps anyway. Which will be nice. No Citadel. Might be able to Citadel the Doria? That I don't know. Torps for the BBs. Yeah, no sits. US ships do, uh, don't like giving up Citadels to AP bombs. Today is the day where you have lost the will to live due to your wonderful teammates. Randoms are sometimes challenging. Certainly can be SFNL. By the way, um, you had said something the other day about, you know, learning other classes or some shit, but then you disappeared. Um, I tried to respond to you, but I never heard back from you, so... Did you hear what I said, or any of that stuff? Each two there. Dispersion worked out really well for us. Swing this way, come back in on that line. Well, the door is low. Can torp that. Cut that way. Now that we know where he's going. Rams a ship. Let 
Might kill. Might not. Did not. So I think the Yahagi or whatever that was mid probably got his torps off. If we get anything here, like just a pen would be enough. Nope. Okay, cool. Thought it dropped too low. Uh, take torps for the New Mexico. Man, that was funny. You guys run into one group of guys who play low tiers exclusively and get clubbed. You talking about us or somebody else? Bogsy and his friends? Oh, I didn't know Bogsy ran a lot of low tier stuff. I know he likes the, uh... Oh, what is it? Bugsy likes the secondary ship, the Mikasa. Big fan of the Mikasa. Oh. Well, good on him for clubbing you. Yeah, but, um... SFNL. So I did look at, uh, I looked into what you said about carrier stuff. I guess you were specifically talking about the midway. We didn't lead enough. We get one though. Um, I mean, your midway stats, you have more damage than me, but you don't have a better win rate. Um, you have more damage, and damage is PR, so PR doesn't give a shit about win rate. But in terms of aircraft carriers, I, I do still have an edge over you in terms of general stats. Yeah, in solo games. In solo games, your midway is like 140-ish. Mine is like 96. And um, my win rate is 5, points, 5 percentage points higher than yours. So I think mine was like 63.8. And yours was... Uh, 58 point something, something like that. It's roughly a 5 percentage point difference. So, I mean, you were up by 45 some thousand damage per game, but... Meh. I mean, in terms of win rate, I think it's... 5 percent is pretty noticeable. I tend to... I tend to gauge off win rate. I don't really look at PR. PR, to me, is a great stat if you're looking for somebody to carry. So... You know, if you're thinking of a baseball team, you're going to have a pitcher, you're going to have a batter, you know, you're going to have people that are going to catch the ball and throw the ball and stuff. If you want an all-star batter, you're going to be looking at what they're hit, you know, how they hit. What do they do? How many runs do they get per game? How many home runs do they hit? Shit like that. That, to me, is what PR is. Cool. So, like, if you need somebody that's going to drive home the runs... Well, in this game, you need somebody that's going to drive home the damage. PR is damage and kills. Um, win rate, to me, is different. Win rate means influence in a battle. So I tend to focus on win rate instead. Hey, Lord Zath. Oh, we can upgrade something else now, which is good. Uh, so I think we said we were going to upgrade the Torp second. So we'll get that going. How goes it? Uh, doing a regrind stream. So we did the host show and we got, um, we got, oh God, 35,000 experience on the host show before it was just like, this sucks. <laughs> um, really what happened is we sat in queue for about 15 minutes and it was like, well, I think I'm just going to free XP that last 8,000 and get up to the Ryujo. So finished off with the Hosho. We're on the Ryujo now and we're doing the thing. Programs that tell the win rate and PR of a team when in battle. Oh, uh, MM. Uh, matchmaker monitor, matchmaker spy, I guess, I don't know. 
when you load into the game, it'll look up all the all the names of the people on your team and on the enemy team, and it'll tell you, you know, are they good in their ships or whatever. I don't, I don't run it. Um, I actually think that 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 hurts you. Some people might say, "Ooh, well, this guy's really good. I need to help him, you know, do good stuff and whatever." But um, I find that also means that you're likely to devalue other people. And if they happen to be in a good position, and this is one of those games where they land those big shots, if you aren't helping them because you're like, "Nah, this guy's just not, it's just not good enough." I mean, you could be throwing away wins. But everybody plays their own way. Four destroyers, so maybe we can see something here. Yeah, focusing people because they're good doesn't win games, so it's all the more reason not to run matchmaker rating, because all it's going to do is tell you what not to do. Do you have any information here? Any other DDs? So we don't get to strike again. We get to see a Mahan, that's cool. Good with that. We'll run planes out for the Mahan. Oh, and the Ognavoy is in PN, so he will know what he's doing. Which could be rough for us. Against the Vesser, they could Citadel the Perth, although the Perth Citadel is a little tricky. Try to go for the Akazuki, try to harass the Mahan. We still haven't seen the Gaide. Sumi is going there. Oh, nope, going the other way. How you doing? Concentrate fire on the enemy warship. Slides in. That's an oof. Does he keep turning or what? I think he keeps turning. Oh my god, it's just so sluggish. Did what we could. I mean, we hurt him pretty bad, so he's in full retreat, which is good. Maybe we could work on the Ismail a little. You deleted all your mods and tools. I have to say, I actually really like the regen thing that tells you, you know, how much, how many hit points you could regen. I find that to be very useful. Uh, I installed this because of replay situations where people that, um, you know, they're getting dumpstered by CVs. It helps to know what, what, you know, if your AA is still functional. And then this mod, which tracks how many uh, fighters you use, I think is fucking great. This needs to be in the game. There's just, there's no reason why this shouldn't be in the game. I realize it's covered by a mod, but, you know, they should pay whoever made the mod a few hundred bucks and say like, Hey, can we add this to our game? And they'll say yes, and it's better than not getting paid at all. There's the guy, Dave. I think we get one torp. We just need to bail. There's too much shit there. Can hunt for the Mahan again, maybe? Yeah, way too much stuff. But we know the lay of the land now, which is good. Okay. Destination reached. Autopilot mode disabled. Mahan might still be in smoke. Yeah, I don't quite know what that's going to do, but we have the... Well, do you have a... Can you tell me where the Ognavoy is? Like, can you ping the map or something? That's a problem. Why did we see the Mahan briefly? See if we can help with the Agna oh, boy. Come on, he planes fucking turn. Z is not dead. Hmm. 
concerning, but not pushing forward. We're still holding the influence line. This is awkward. Of course, we just lost that, so they're going to bully now. Want to eat damage for free? Oh, buddy. Nobody expects the Torpedo Inquisition. That's gonna hurt. It did, in fact, hurt. Alright, well. He's gone. Um, Alright, well, we lost the DD, but they lost one as well. We've got a second to back up. There we go. Good shots from the newbie gamer dude. Mode Finalize the kill. Nice. Uh, probably work on the Byron, which realistically we should use bombs for, but these aren't upgraded, so I'll just use torps. Could also try to deal with the Eugen. This guy, if he just kind of lingered back for a bit, he might be able to heal. So this is a little unfortunate because he's going to die to the Oigan. But we will help with this so we can get our guys off the D-line and able to move forward and potentially wrap. Ooh, Byron's turning out. Byron looking to gamer turn or get his rear gun in? I uh, might have let enough. Might not have. We're fine. One more set of torps is a kill. Destination reached. Probably goes down before. Alright, well, he's dead. So we will. Oh, fuck, I can't bomb a Colorado. Um. I can bomb a Bismarck, though. Enemy battleship destroyed. Maybe. Maybe? And the Nizenau did get murdered by the Oigan. Akazuki Colorado is a thing. Autopilot mode enabled. This dude could push at some point that I'm not aware of. I'm surprised we don't see much of any of that. There's the Akazuki. All stations requesting fire on the designated Anybody? Target. Anybody? Anybody gonna shoot this? Fire on the enemy warship. Anybody at all? Nope. You don't care, I don't care. All good. So I'm on the brakes, drop off tip of the nose. Well, front gun, really. But we did not get citadels, and they're not upgraded bombers, so that just might not be a thing we can do. But we can try to work on the Colorado. A little. It's getting pretty close to the island, which means we might not have the line to be able to torp him, which would make me very sad. So let's see if we can swing the line. Give us additional space. Nope. Yeah, fuck. Uh, well. Uh, we can rocket the Akazuki. Bismarck probably goes down by the time we get there. Dealing with a Dunkirk Perth that know what they're doing. Ismail as well. He probably gets shut down, so we'll work on the Bismarck Akazuki. Cool. Akazuki smokes. Unfortunate. He's already down to about half. We pulled back so we don't have threat of being spotted. Shoot again. No, he stopped firing. Uh, Perth probably going for the torps there. Perth kills the Colorado. We haven't seen the Nagato, Budenoy, all that stuff in a while. Autopilot mode enabled. Gallant might take the fight with the Akazuki. That might go really poorly. Gallant's full health, though, but he's tier 6 versus a tier 8. Which could be rough. 
I will come over to Torp the Ismail or potentially the Akazuki to try to help this dude so he doesn't just get straight up clocked. They do see each other. Akazuki opens up. Gallant has not opened up. Gallant is dying. Beep, 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 beep. We're just trying to keep this dude busy. Cool. Well, he ate some shit. Just shoot your guns, Gallant. Bruh. Let's eat that torp. The jukes. Gallant should shoot again. Whatever. Enemy destroyer foundered. It is done. Uh, rockets for the Budnoi Eugen? Rockets for the Eugen? Hello, Pieter. Womp womp. Oh, no engine boost here. Yeah. Kinda skirted it, but kinda didn't. Whatever. Come back out with Torps. Alright, well, both of our, uh... Both of our champions have gone down. Eugen is not going to... Does the Eugen beach? Oh, uh, it does, but we don't have the angle. We might get two shots on the Nagato. Maybe. Maybe? Oigen's down, which is good. Coming back in on the Nagato. Looks like he's healing, but if he takes some shells, we might get a kill with two Torps, but he's gonna turn. One Torp. Not enough. We can bomb the Nagato Ismail. Also, we can just move up. Feel like we're in a pretty dominant position, so... Gotta goes down. We'll work on the Ismail. Into Torp and Abermarl. That's pretty rough times for the Vaser. Abermarl's AA is not a joke. Especially when you're not even tiered. Bye. Can I sit at Elevator? Probably not. I think this is one of them no cap kill all kind of things, so expect this is uh Aw. Tried to do the thing. Autopilot mode disabled. You love the Ryu show? I have fond memories of the ship, but then as I played more and more and more, um, I started having a lot of trouble with the Japanese line unless I train on it. Which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this. Just to kind of reintroduce myself to the uh, Japanese attack mechanics. Her rudder, shaft's real, her rudder shift is really quick. Much like for that, Vlad's going to leave the cap. I'm pretty sure the Vaser is dead, but I mean, if we could get this cap and I got the XP, I would not be sad about that, but... We should finish upgrading off of this. Uh, then it's down to the hull upgrade. This rudder is like that. You do torpedo peats in yours. 
I mean, this would be hilarious if he lives for a minute and three seconds. I would be okay with this. It's not gonna happen, but it would be nice. No! Battle ends in five minutes. It didn't happen? Alright, so with that, we should be able to upgrade the bombers. Alright. This is the thing. Alright. And then we're on 171,000 experience grind. Kind of a lot. You hate the regrind? IGN Gunboat DD line for the 11th time? Well, do something that's fun. Don't do the thing that's optimum, just do the thing that's fun. That's the whole point of it. That's why I've done CVs fucking nine different times. <laughs> like, do what you want to do. Then again, I think you said you were a destroyer main, so maybe that's what you want to do. Did six lines before this, American Battleship was the worst? Yeah, the American Battleships easily took me about six to eight months to finish, because I did not enjoy that shit at all. So... Yeah. I hated the North Carolina with a passion, because its shells were so fucking floaty. You know, I knew where to shoot in Tier 6, I knew where to shoot Tier 7, and then suddenly Tier 8's just, like, completely different. So, really? Are you serious with this? So I legit ground through the North Carolina shooting HE. Unless I was within 6 kilometers, I did not use AP. Because fuck that. Couldn't lead it, couldn't make it do a damn thing. Hated it. Hated it with a passion. Moved up to the Iowa. Iowa felt normal again, which was nice. And then we got to the Montana, which was slower than the Iowa, so it kind of sucked. And then I'd have the I the Montana, so I didn't need to play it anymore. So I stopped playing it. I had more fun with the German line, although I didn't like the Nizen now at all. Right. I didn't like the Nizenau at all, which I guess is like a heavy cruiser, not a battleship or something. And... I really like the FTG. Italian battleships were up to tier 9, but... Play it, don't play it, whatever. Nizenau was the highlight of the line for you? Well, when I play a battleship, I'm assuming that the battleship is going to be able to tank or, you know, take shots or something. And I guess the Nizenau is more maneuverable, aggressive tactics, which is, I mean, cruisers, cruiser play. Cruiser is my weakest play um, for a variety of reasons. I mean, in terms of damage mitigation, often damage mitigation has to be meted with range, which means floaty shells, which pisses me off. Um, I don't know. It's just, it really didn't click for me. Like, the other ones felt a certain way, and then I got to the Nizenau, and it felt really aggressively different in a way that I was not interested in. So eventually I free XP'd past it. It's like, nope, done with this shit. Don't care. Bombing with a British CV, do you place the targeting reticle on approach? Center a target. I have a video for that, Striker. So, I will drop a fighter here for spotting. Then I will coast in the general direction of over that way. And I will get you this video, so. So if we look over on the YouTube channel and we put in uh, British, I think. Best way to use British bombs. So that is the best way, best way to use British bombs. Do the fighter keep stuff lit? There's only two destroyers, which is kind of cool. Perth? We haven't seen, so Hatsu might be over here. Hey look, it's a Hatsu. We don't have a shot on the Hatsu, but I do have a shot on the Perth. It's fine.
Autopilot nice mode work. enabled. What's going on? Oh. <clears throat> Vlad's going wide. Uh, so, now that we're back kind of firmly ensconced with this uh, Tier 6 stuff, Tier 6 CVs do not want to interact with Tier 8 battleships. Tier 8 battleships have too much fucking health, too much fucking healing for uh, a Tier 6 CV to really be able to, like, cripple or, well, do very much at all, too. Um, the trading for your planes to their health is just, the number is not even something you can play with. So in general, like, the Vlad is probably something we really cannot deal with at all. Uh, so it's on us to try to find places where we can help. Molotov is tier 6. King George is low tier. But the mines ain't nothing to fuck with. And the Vlad... I don't think it's the best AA in the world, but I mean, it's still tier 8. So it's going to be on a level of oof that we are not really prepared for. I think we get 2 there. So, I have to be mindful of the Ranger, but I also have to be mindful of the AA up there. Shit. This is a really awkward shot. Does the Byron want to turn back in? Maybe? He does. I think. We get one, but he turns out, so we probably don't get the second. So close, though. Does he keep turning? Nope. Well, maybe. Whatever. Probably. Uh, we might be able to sit the Vlad, who's pretty fucked up. Because we do have the upgraded bombers. It's Russian. We might get lucky. Am I accepting any replay reviews this stream? Uh, no, when I do regrind streams, I tend to just lock in on the content. I'll answer some questions or something, but... Um, skipping out to do replay or replay stuff is kind of jarring. It's... Unless for some reason it happens to be a Ryuzo replay. That would make sense. Also, as a question to the regulars in the channel, would you like to see some kind of, uh, replay review day? We can Citadel the Vlad. It's good to know. So I know people like to see it. Is it something I should try to incorporate into, like, uh, some kind of stream as a regular thing? Could strike the Molotov? Be better to strike the George. Molotov's just gonna maneuver aggressively. We're gonna eat a lot of damage for it, which... We might not even get to strike the George here. Fuck. No, we do get to strike the George. Probably two Citadels. Or nothing. Could also be nothing. Do you think they'll ever release more Minor Nation CVs? Minor Nation. Like, Pan-Asian or something? Or... Um... Mix it up, please. Not a single day for regrinds, because I can listen to two or three and then you tune out. Uh, you mean replays, not regrinds, Sesimer? Does he beach? I feel like he's so close to beaching. No. More jukes. Whatever. All stations, concentrate fire on the target. Might be able to hurt the mines, maybe. King George would be worth doing. Molotov is fucked off. Something's gotta stop the mines. Uh, I have no idea if they'll release Minor Nation CVs. I think right now they've announced rocket changes. If you look at the pattern of releases over the past however long, 
um, Wargaming has continued to pull away from DD rocket interactions. The, um, the FDR, for instance, really didn't have any useful uh, rockets against destroyers. It's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to reverse. Um, if you look at the Immelman, there's no rockets. If you look at uh, the German CV line, AP uh, ammunition is not really designed to deal with destroyers. So right now, I think they're going through kind of a fundamental shift on what they want to be putting into the game versus, you know, what they could put into the game. You could pre-drop here. Probably should, but I'm willing to throw some planes if we can get citadels, maybe? Maybe. Some movement. One. We get one. <clears throat> um... So, I don't know how many new lines they're gonna have in the works while they're kind of figuring out some shit. Because they're doing, uh... They're altering the rocket planes. They're altering, uh, rocket planes, how they shoot. That's going to be probably a few months worth of data collection to see how that works, how it interacts with destroyers. Do they need to alter it? Does it need to be buffed? Does it need to be nerfed? I mean, it's going to be a severe change because there's four different nations in this game that use rocket planes as opposed to like World of Warships Legends, which doesn't have rocket planes at all. Um, we'll try to cut across the Akazuki. See if we can draw, draw them out. Destination reached. Autopilot mode disabled. Let's see if we can do that again. AA is off. Maybe this torp. That's actually a kill. Enemy destroyer foundered. I think our map positions are scary as fuck. Oh, supposedly we have more health. Um. Our team has taken the lead. Let's see. So I don't, I don't expect them to be throwing in new carrier after new carrier after new carrier. I think right now they're going to release subs into the wild. That's going to be its own bundle, you know, bag of cats. Um. They're still evaluating commander rework changes. I mean, there's a lot going on right now, and throwing in an entire new carrier line could potentially just be really fucking odd. That being said, they do seem to have a lot of shit in the works at the moment, so I mean, maybe they just like controversy and they're willing to uh, do a bunch of stuff to keep it fresh. That's possible, right? We could Citadel... I think we could Citadel the Doria. Yeah? Satisfying getting Torp kills? Yeah, Torp kills on DDs are pretty sexy. But I mean, we don't get that if he wasn't staring at the battleship that was ready to shoot him in the ass, so... <clears throat> kind of took advantage of the situation, really. So Colorado goes down. Cool. We're gonna work on the Doria. Uh... You okay, bro? <laughs> I'm wondering if the Doria is gonna ram him. Feels like that's going to be a ram. It was indeed a ram. We try to bomb the Molotov, but he's going to be extremely maneuverable, so it's unlikely we're able to bomb open water. So I think we go for the Byron, but there might not be a Byron by the time we get there. You're thinking of a one-off CV, like, uh... French, Italian, premium shop, free XP, coal. Um. Enemy battleship sunk. Autopilot mode enabled. There's only one carrier. Two carriers? There's only one carrier that's like a premium, special, non standard, whatever, that's actually very similar to a tech tree line which is the Enterprise. The Enterprise has, for all intents and purposes, the same rockets as the Lexington, but then the Lexington got nerfed and altered to what the US line is now. But the, the Enterprise just kind of kept the way that it used to be. Um, so it's got exceptionally capable rocket planes because the US line got nerfed and they don't now. So 
It has that going for it, but like, it's got rockets, torps, bombs, just like the Lexington has rockets, torps, bombs. Its rockets regen a little faster, but they have a little less pen. Uh, its bombs are AP instead of HE. Like, there's, it's extremely similar, but different. Um, so what you're saying, Ajax, sounds more like, um, like they would be making kind of a knockoff carrier, kind of like the Saipan, right? The, the Saipan has the, uh, the Chinese New Year Sanzang, uh, which is just basically, it's a Saipan with a skin. That's all it is. They could do a knockoff carrier, or they could have just another one of the formula, which is rockets, torps, bombs, but it happens to have, like, a European flag on top of it, or a French flag on top of it or something, but I don't think that scratches the itch because you have so many other options for rockets, torps, bombs. So the question comes in, what's nifty about the torps or what's nifty about the bombs or what's nifty about the rockets like what what makes this special and if you're gonna have something special if you're gonna create like a, a line gimmick like let's say french let's say the hulls end up going like 35 40 knots or something um you know you can kick on the afterburner and the hull can move really aggressively or you've got reached. The engine boost is twice as powerful or something. So the planes are natively slow, but when you kick on the engine boost, it's extremely zippy. Like, you have to have some kind of gimmick. And the question is, what is the gimmick to design a line around? Uh, you saw in the research bureau, there's... Uh, the Yolo Emilio, the Paolo Emilio or something. I mean, that could effectively be in a full Italian line of DDs. Short range torps, uh full speed moving smoke and sap he with high health so you know ambush stuff you've got super super fast speed uh french destroyers then you've got kind of a different version of the ambush with italian that kind of has different capability sets sort of i mean that could be its own line so it's not just kind of like making a carrier just eh, have a carrier you got to establish like what's a workable gimmick how could we move this out and mold this in to represent a nationality or concept i mean you got to like lay the foundation for the long term and i'm going to be honest man there's just so much shit going on right now i don't know if they want to do that because it really feels like that's a lot of foundation laying You're thinking of a CV with some kind of special Italian thing with smoke, like sap rockets. Well, if you have sap rockets, then... First off, the rocket planes are literally getting changed probably in two or three patches. They're gonna test it, but I mean, all indications seem to look like, you know... The, the green flags are gonna come out and that change is coming in. And they're gonna fundamentally alter the way that rockets exist. So, if you introduce sap rockets and you can't hit destroyers <laughs> because if a destroyer has the you know wherewithal to notice hey there's rocket planes over there and just even like attempts to give a shit they're not going to get hit by rockets or they'll be hit by very few well what are your sap rockets going to do are your sap rockets designed for cruisers then um do you have like tiny tims but a sap version where it's just it, it's got a really nasty hit to it i don't i mean i don't know there's a lot of, uh, I mean, design, game design is interesting because you literally create the world. You can create it, reshape it, alter it to anything you want it to be, just like in the movie um, Inception. You know, you are the thing that cr carves out new sections of reality as you put it into the game and see if it works with the rest of everything that's there. So it's possible they come up with cool shit. I think uh, support CVs would probably be the most interesting with some kind of consumable based gameplay with like hydro buoys or maybe a smoke drop. Um, a lot of people seem to, a lot of CV players for whatever reason seem to say that they would like rocket planes but have them have like a machine gun function so that you can interact with enemy, enemy planes. Like you actually fly over and you shoot them. But the question is if you have something like that how would you have to have the machine gun planes work? Like, do they die after you use them? Because if your machine gun planes kill enemy planes for free, then you just run around killing all the enemy planes. 
because they can't kill you, so you just totally shut down an enemy CV and GG, motherfucker. Um, so realistically, it's like for every plane they kill, you'd probably have to lose a rocket or a machine gun plane. But I mean, that's a thing they could do. That would be new. That would be interesting. Uh, if you had some kind of heal consumable drop that you could do. I mean, there's there's possibilities out there. They just have to sit down, come up with them, test them, and figure out what the hell works. So... This is not a position that's going to work out for the Visteris dude. Also, I think he could turn his AA on and off because I think we've gone outside of his detection a time or two. I believe his detection's like 2-7. Could be wrong on that. So like right now, he could be dark. How many planes has he killed? He's killed one and a half. So if he just didn't use his AA... I'm not saying it would have been the difference between life or death, but... <laughs> It would have given us a little less information, and if rendering delay cloaks your ship, rendering delay is needed before your ship comes back up. So it does actually have that pop in, pop out effect, assuming it's 2.7. I don't remember what Steris' aerial detection is. Also, the fact that he doesn't have a smoke and the fact that he ran across us pretty much means, bruh, I'm gonna be up your ass sideways. You probably don't wanna be out here just waiting to get shot a lot, so. He threw a lot of health away there. After taking 7,000 damage, he realized he was able to turn. That is true. New skill unlocked. Fighter airborne. But to see destroyer play like this that, that I'm able to pounce on, I mean, it's unfortunate. T61 has Hydro. We can help with this. Um, it's unfortunate, and I hope that, you know, if somebody knows him or something, hey, keep the replay. We'll check it out on stream, that kind of gig. Because I'm sure we could play this differently. All stations, reporting the position of a strategic target. Thank you very much. Can we drop a fighter? No, don't have time. Alright, so the Visteris is bullied off, so these guys are pushing forward. Uh, we had a DD over here, so they immediately just won that flank, because had DD versus no DD. It's contentious in the center, and I think actually Razarusha gets his ass kicked here. Because he's not in smoke, he's going to be lit by a CV, and he's going to be shot by, I think, five different ships. So, our destroyer is dead. Katowski goes down, though. It's kind of cool. You're already lit. You need to use your AA. You've got a fighter literally parked on top of you, so there's no going dark. There you go. When he drops, he's still available. Fighter airborne. Yeah, shells, 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 shells. Dead. Unfortunate. Gonna lose some lose some stuff here. I think he's slowing down. Go back in on the Shira. Requesting support. Only the one he pulled forward. Or did he? He might have kept reversing. DD's running AA is just silly for a craft meant to be stealthy. No. I mean it's got its place. Um, but there are ways that you can use it in order to juggle, um, which the Visteris didn't necessarily do, but the way that I try to teach how AA works, because there are a lot of people that don't quite seem to understand it, is AA kills an amount of planes per attack on your ship. It could be that you lose, that you kill half a plane per attack on the ship. Could be that you kill two planes, or three planes, or five planes. I mean, it just depends on what the AA is. And when you start to stack ships together, they start to amplify each other. You know, if one, this ship kills one plane, and the other ship kills one plane, well then combined they kill two. It's just math. Uh, I can't bomb the York open water. Ooh, this is super... That's kinda sus. 
And these guys are bogged down because they don't have a DD to lead them. Um... So, like, if you've got a destroyer that you kill half a plane with your AA, okay, what does that mean? Well, if you need to kill one and a half planes to prevent, you know, a second strike, or, or sorry, two planes to prevent a second strike, then if you provide half a ship worth of AA, then if you want to prevent a second strike, you need another 1.5 uh, planes worth of AA, which is doable. It might be one other ship, it might be two other ships. It depends on what's going on. But like, right here, these guys are able to support each other. We don't really have ways in on this. Lost the Katowski. Can I go for this? Really nice if I could. We lost a lot of planes for that. But he is down. Which is important. You might be able to bomb the Kavor. Requesting assistance. This is a Vesteris, who would have been able to heal, so he's probably up to like here. Yeah. So he did heal up, but he's got guns. Hopefully these guys don't eat all the torps in the world and get murdered. Don't die! He got oofed, but he's still alive. And the Vesteris is so close, there's no way he goes dark. Is this Shira? If we get two Citadels, this is a kill. Sadness. Really bad, but would like to learn. Oh, USN usually. I guess somebody else is. What did Exert ask? Hey, partner, what tier 6 CV would you recommend for learning? Ah. Yeah, the US line in general is what I would recommend for the, the learning tier. Um, it's got the best feedback loop. It has good penetration on its HE rockets and HE bombs. So all you have to do is focus on hitting something. You don't have to focus on how you hit it. You just have to focus on hitting it. Um, which means that while you're learning, you're going to have a better experience than if you have to, like, somehow pull, you know, magic tricks out of your ass to be able to actually hit it in the correct way. Um, which is pretty significant. Uh, fighter... Well, he is shooting at the fighter. Maybe we can help with the Vesteris? He goes down. Kavor bailed. That sucks. Well, this flank didn't need to get owned. <laughs> But I guess we spent all this time dicking with this, so that's unfortunate. Maybe the Vesteris will light himself again. Looks like he's got almost no health. Probably slunk around behind the island. It's the Shira. I have to assume he ran back to his friends. He did. Try to catch the line. That should be a good line. Might be a kill. It is. Enemy destroyer blown up. Nuremberg has more health than I'm going to be able to deal with. These guys need to come over and sweep into. What the fuck happened here? Kavor got owned. Okay. You're curious of my opinion on ships and CV level tiers that have no effective AA. While it might be historically accurate, do you think wargaming should reevaluate? Um, well, if you think of things in a 1v1, what is the detection on a battleship versus the de detection on a DD? Is the battleship ever going to be able to detect the DD outside of running it down against like a basically a map edge? Well, the answer is probably no. So in a 1v1, if the battleship can never detect a destroyer, how does the battleship deal with the destroyer? Well, Battleship can't run RPF, Battleship might not have any detection consumables like radar or hydro or whatever, so he just kind of deals with the shit for as long as he can until he dies, because he has no rules to dictate the engagement. But, it's a team game. You have other people that have the ability to spot the destroyer for you through radar, uh, 
another destroyer which can run down and force an interaction and because of the additional things that you have you have your strengths and your weaknesses other teammates fill those weaknesses with their strengths and you work together as a team to make a greater whole that's that's the goal that's the that's the dream making the dream work so if you're fighting against something that's tier 3 or tier 4 and it has either no or terribly shit-tastic AA, well, know that, know that it's a weakness, and try to incorporate something that's going to allow you to use the strength of someone else to keep yourself safe, or at least allow you to perform your function. Um, so for instance, the Summers has terrible AA. Miserably terrible-tastic god-awful AA, and it's like tier 10. But, it can still do what it needs to do, because it can still attack things, it can still torp things, it's got a lot of range. It might not be able to go off completely independent and do whatever the fuck it wants to do. Not to say that it can't. It could. But, if it gets caught, you know, somebody's like, hey, I've got RPF, there's a DD out here. Or, a bunch of torps show up and they're like, hey CV, I bet the Summers is out there. Well, he might get caught with his pants down and get wrecked for it. But that's going to be a player choice. Um, it's just like a battleship can't take wide angles that the battleship might want if there's an enemy destroyer in the area, or eventually an enemy sub in the area. Because it's going to put himself at an undue risk that's just frankly not worth dealing with. So you play safer. You pick a position where you've got some semblance of support against the destroyer that might fuck you over. Again, same thing with AA. You don't have to be on top of somebody, but you just need to be in a position that's relevant to maybe the attack angle that, that the CV might use. Or some form of overlapping AA can be useful as well. Torps maybe for the Pyotr. Thanks for your comment. Sure. Um, so for those that are new to the channel or don't watch a lot, um, I do offer to do anti-CV tactic replays for free. So if you're in a surface ship and you get dunked, like for instance, the Visteris had a really shit-tastic experience. He ran over to be a good little soldier and grab D and, well, suddenly there were rocket planes up his ass and most of his ship got ripped apart, uh, you know, before live studio audience. Which is rough. Um, if he wanted to submit the submit the replay, we're gonna look Auto at what he did. What's one thing he could have done? Instead of going full speed to A, he could have gone half speed. If he was back here when I came over, dropped my little fighter and fucked off, I wouldn't have caught him. Which means I wouldn't have shot him. Which means I wouldn't have had that interaction. Now if he kept moving forward and then shot at the, the fighter, I would know he was there and I might be able to go back after. But we wouldn't have had that initial interaction. Secondly, does he go to A? If nobody else is going to A, should he go to A? Because if he doesn't have enough AA to fight me off, even though he's a European DD, I mean, what is he going to expect to happen if I suddenly call his bluff? I mean, you can act like you've got, you know, you can act like you have a royal flush. You've got, you've got the best cards in the business in the poker game, but... If somebody calls you on it and it turns out you don't have jack shit, well, that's going to be a real unpleasant reckoning, which is exactly what happened. Destination reached. Autopilot mode disabled. Battle ends in five minutes. I think we can probably sit at all the Piotr. But if you're in a if you're in a situation where you know the lack of CV ability or AA ability or something, you're just like fuck. I just don't know what I could have done. I can't tell you um, the magic button to push or whatever. But one thing I'm not going to tell you to do is you need to hide at the back of the map, buried in a big group of your team. You don't get to have fun this game. I'm not going to tell you that because it's bullshit. We're in a CV game, there were folks that pushed over here, there were folks that pushed out there, all sorts of shit happened. We got six kills mostly because we shot low health targets with rockets. So it's not like, you know, we went around dumpstering everybody. We have 70,000 damage. Um, but... I think his AA ends at 5.8. 
So it's not about, you know, you need to just go hide somewhere and shit yourself. Because that's just legit, it's not what it is. But, you do need to recognize uh, what your options are. And how to, uh, and how to use them. It's important. You learned something from that match? What did you learn? You gotta go, newbie. See you, man. Don't walk out of smoke in front of seven to nine ships. <laughs> it's probably a good lesson. I think that's a safe one. Yeah, I think you, you had him on... Um... Uh, I think you had him on Hydro and you wanted to keep him in Hydro because my rockets were coming, you were shooting him or whatever. And you were behind his smoke screen, I believe, to the enemy. So it's like, okay, this seems legit. And then all of a sudden the planes were on you and it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so, yeah. You had to leave your smoke because he torped it? Ah, uh, okay. Well, that would make sense too. You just checked your best PR win rate DDs have terrible AA, like the French and the IGN Torp ones. Sure. Action stations. Like, one of the things that I'll say is, here's the Farragut. If the Farragut goes out here, and the Grof Spey is here, what is the Farragut doing from here that couldn't happen if the Grof Spey was here? And, you know, he just backed up a little bit. Just one, two kilometers. Or, if the Farragut goes all the way out here, okay, is this going to be the playmaker, like the game-winning play? Does this result in the God Torps? This is the Dev Strike after Dev Strike? Because it needs to be. Because if you come out here and you Dev Strike two battleships and then the CV's up your ass and you die, well, you Dev Struck two battleships. I mean, if it comes down to a trade, it's a pretty effective trade. That's okay. That's worth it. That's good enough. But if it's not... And you're out here, and then like a DD rolls up, and then there's battleships that you shoot you, and it's just all kinds of pain. Well, bruh, there's one person that put you out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, that is you. So... It's just, it's kind of awkward, man. Nope, too close. Plus he smoked, which is cool. So at least we got a consumable out of it. Please turn planes. Right, well, we've seen three out of four. Three out of four ain't bad. Is there another one over here? There is! Oh, that, that ended up working out really well. The T-61 is like a three kilometer aerial detection, I think. Because we used to run the T-61 in the tier six clan battles. And these motherfuckers were spotted from space. They ate AA damage, or they ate rocket damage like it was going out of style. Aside from tier 4 ships, uh, most have okay to good AA. I mean, some, some don't. Like, the Musashi has terrible AA. Summers has terrible AA. Uh, Orkin has terrible AA. It gets used as a balancing characteristic by the, um... By the devs. I mean, yeah, there might not be a CV in every match, but it's still a balancing characteristic. We go for the Aoba, maybe? Go for the Makarov, and then spin onto the Aoba. It's reversing? Kind of. Or not? I don't know. He's doing whatever he's doing, really. It's kind of what he's doing. We're gonna go for the Aoba now. A decent hit into the Makarov, though. R and a bottle of rum. It's probably decent. Let's try to work on, um... Fighter destroyed. Let's try to work on destroyers if we can. We hurt the T-61. Gaide might have the favor in that. Like, these guys are kind of off in the middle of nowhere sort of thing, so they'll get to fight, but the New Mexico is closer. 
Who has more friends? T61 has more friends if the guy they fights him. Granted, the New Mexico might miss, but. Ooh, that's scary. Yep, that's an oof. There's the Farragut. We took destroyer duty on this flank. Getting something, although he might still go in on that New Mexico. Gallant versus Nevsky Aoba? Or Nevny versus Gallant Aoba? I don't know. Feels like a lot. Aoba's dead though! Says the Nevs the Nevny. Guide is chasing the T61 and the New Mexico. Maybe the T61 just bailed. If so, maybe he's able to do something other than die. I see shell fire, so that's kind of scary looking. Maybe we can help. Yeah. Roger. Yeah, I'm gonna spot for you, dude. But you're gonna have to make the plays. Okay. Nevsny went. Nevsny went dark. How the fuck did we Fighter see him? Airborne. Just blind shot. I don't know. New Mexico is not dead. This is good. There's the T. So now we know where that is. That's a, that's a respect smoke there. He's like, bruh, after before, not again, sir. Not today. Still, four DDs are up. Okay. Enemy destroyer foundered. Summer's AA is two deck, two dudes on a deck with some pistols. Yeah, either that or like a slingshot. Chuck some rocks at somebody, see if something happens. What is that? Shinonome? Concentrate fire on the designated You target. are so fucked. Does not want to play. Shinonome's AA is also terrible. We got eight rocket hits, that's pretty big. Fighter airborne. Uh, that's actually the maximum. That was probably a good chunk. Good! Very fucking good. Sadly, our fighters go down. Farragut's up. Nice work. Well, if we know where the Farragut is, then I gotta go for the Farragut. Now we know where the Gallant was. Fighter destroyed. Start our attack early. Should be okay. Enemy destroyer sunk. Our team has taken the lead. You must go for the Gallant. Shinonome is still in smoke? For now. Let's see, where the f Where's this dude? Did he commit or did he bail? I think he bailed because he has no health, right? 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 Yeah. He bailed. Destination reached. Autopilot the smoke disabled. should be down. Pensacola's AA is no joke. But we do get to shoot with one plane, as they don't shoot the DD with. Fighter airborne. Also, we have to look for this again. Gallant is spotted by the Bayern. Gallant goes down. Let's look for the Shinonome, who is out of smoke. Doing Shinonome stuff. somewhere. Fuck. He has disappeared into the void. Oh, somebody saw him. Start the attack, slam on the brakes, hard cut over. Pick the line, stick it. Autopilot mode enabled. Okay. Pretty lucky on rocket RNG. 
Uh, it's got a fairly slim reticle, so I mean, as long as they cooperate and give you a broadside, you can usually uh, get the hits, so... I only have a limited amount of T61 games, and you have to ruin one. Oh, hey, Midwatch. Well, now I know why you gave me the respect smoke. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> It's two? Are you going for like PR or something? Is that what it is? Hey, Fuckman. Hit one, maybe two. Good, we get two, that'll be a kill. Enough to chuck a single at him. Spending most of your time grinding new lines? Well, I understand. Autopilot mode disabled. Well, here, Mr. Sir. I guess you're already on my contacts. I'll just send you an invite. I suppose I could torp that down? Should probably torp it. Let's do it. Let's commit to the bit. Autopilot mode enabled. If it's a kill, it's a kraken. So woo. <laughs> you meanie ash. Just protecting my team. We had like two destroyers and they had four, which is scary as fuck. So we were able to address that issue and make good for it. If I was there with rockets, I might get the shot. But I don't think so. Twerps happen, Raz. I'm just glad to be in a CV that's like able to do stuff. The Ryujo is, um, I mean, Tier 6 is not able to run away with games, but, um, it's able to do things. As opposed to the Hosho, which is just like... <sighs> Can't do anything. There's much, much sadness. Yeah, you're on here. So now you got death threats in WoW's chat for playing CV. You reported them. You should also blacklist him. Don't just report blacklist. Save yourself the misery. No reason. The dude is not going to start reciting poetry from Shakespeare from on high. Giving you the greatest of creative ideas and freedoms or whatever. Just save yourself the misery. Blacklist him. Because it's not going to get better. It might get better. It's possible it gets better. But it's unlikely. And, you know, you might just be wasting time in life. Does the 14-day premium time in tomorrow at 8? I don't know what that means, Jags. There was a thing where you could click the premium time and it should have added premium time. So, I don't know. I'm just playing the Ryujo. I'm doing an IJN regrind. So, you can just pick what you want to pick. If you want to pick the T61 again, you can pick that again. It's all good. <clears throat> Even harassed you after the game. We'd really drop this low. Um, it's just sometimes that's part of the community, man. Uh, if the community teaches people to act like, um, well, to act awful, they learn to act awful. And that's what they do. So you don't have to deal with it. You don't have to put up with it. You did the right thing reporting them. So hopefully they shut the fuck up and chat. I mean, 
Chat bans don't seem to make people want to shut the fuck up, but it does stop them from harassing other people for a while. And blacklist them. Save yourself. Is this tier 6? Yes, this is tier 6. This is uh, the second of the four CVs in the IJN line. You also have to keep in mind that he could be 12 years old. Autopilot mode enabled. That is also true. Colorado's got good range. You don't think matchmaking changes with blacklisting? No, blacklisting is just an auto block. So I could block this person, but if I blacklist them, they will automatically be blocked in every game and in port. So you won't receive messages from them in game, you won't receive messages in port. You also won't get the, uh, provide entire craft for support. You won't get all that, that little spam stuff. Cause there are some people that, I mean, I'm sure people have blacklisted me cause I'm sitting here like, get in the fucking cap. Get back, get back, get back. I mean, sometimes I'm that dude. But, um... So sometimes I'm that dude. And I'm sure I have people that have blocked me or blacklisted me because of it. But sometimes you just, you have to get the message out. But when people, like, start the match... When people start the match, like, just spamming shit... Like this... I just, I'm done with it. There's no reason for him to keep spamming random shit. So it turns that off and it turns the whatever, and in the next game that I have him, he won't be blocked because I only blocked him for this game, but if I blacklisted him, he would be, uh, he would be knocked out for the rest of forever. We do see a Farragut. Why do we see a Farragut? Is he, like, open water gunboating? What the fuck? Bro, you're capping. Are you okay? I don't need this cap. I don't want this cap. It's too high. It's, it's just a shade too high. I mean, granted, they shot at him and they didn't hit, but like, why would you throw away how much progress that you had into the cap to shoot some shells or shit? That seemed very odd. Chunked him. Let's work on the Gallant, maybe? It's two destroyers. So we've chunked the Farragut. He's bailed. This is a big push. So these guys are already moving to Kite, which is good. Because they're not going to stop four ships. Well, four or five ships by themselves. Battleships be rolling up into place. They'll have some big guns for... Uh, big guns to do it. Ryuzo is so much faster on PC than Legends. I think Legends, when they released CVs, they were very conservative about it. Uh, because they had such a rough interaction when they put CVs onto uh, the PC version. But when they did it, they put them in a very, very, very powerful state. And they had to figure out how to change that. So part of, uh, part of I think, the rollout on Legends was to make sure they came out underpowered. So that they could buff them to get them to a point where they need to be. As opposed to just, like, trying to sledgehammer them down to try vainly to keep them in check. So I actually need to bail and drop a fighter to keep this guy lit. Uh, I don't know what his AA range is, but it's probably about there. Let's try Torps on the Colorado, maybe? Fighter airborne. Whatever. Midwatch, if you want to open water on this Colorado, probably want to get in position and smoke. You've got spotting for a full minute with that fighter, plus I'm here, and I'll stay on the Colorado fighter with you. Airborne. Okay. Took a blind shot and it didn't hit. Team is 
Taking the lead. One more Torps after this. I think we get this drop with two, maybe, maybe. Oh, but it's close. We'll just drop early. I think we only dropped one anyway. Hopefully it hits. It did. Fighter destroyed. German smoke doesn't last forever, so he's got to be on the move, but his torps will be up extremely soon because it's a T61. So... Let me try and pull him this way. Those planes didn't last very long. Those torps probably get the kill. And done. Husso's pushing up. C is still cock blocked. Um, are you able to deal with that gallant, Raz, or no? Do you need me to suss him out for you? All stations, concentrate fire on the target. See if we can do something onto the gallant. We've thrown away basically all of our torpedo planes. Autopilot mode disabled. So I'll try to see if we can get him to turn or something. Worst case, we hit the we hit the Julio. Cesare. We might get him with this torp. Wouldn't that be hilarious? We did! Yeah, that'll give a little bit of spotting. We'll take uh, AP bombs out for the Fuso. That's allowed these guys to move up, which is pretty big. And the damage into the Gallant makes him play much more scared, which is also good. We can go back to helping Midwatch. This is still a cock block. They're just, well, Groff is gonna die. Uh, he, he succumbed to the blue balls first, so. The first man to be staring at the naked lady and take off his pants, you know, just ends up becoming public indecency and he gets carted off to jail, so doesn't work out for him. Okay, we're hard turning away during the bomb drop. So that we can try to avoid being close to this stuff. Maybe swing back in on the Fuso. Uh, Midwatch at this point, if you wanted to, you could honestly just open water gunboat farm. You really don't have anything that's going to hurt you. Although the Fuso's guns are in your direction, but I think you'd be, I think you'd be okay. Nice two citadels, silver pen. Um. Roz could kill the Gallant, but I don't know how that one's going to go. Queen is running. Maybe we hit the Pensa? Well, I don't know if we can hit the Pensa, but we could hit the Normandy. Ah, he's not dead. Remarkable. A T-61 is very strong in terms of uh, surface ships. It is not strong in terms of anti-air. Its aerial detection is fairly bad. It doesn't have enough uh, AA to really drive off planes. So, kind of like with the... Um, Autopilot mode oh, what is it? Kind of like with the Slava. Slava is a devastating range threat. Well, no, not that. What am I thinking? Hmm. Trying to think of something and I can't... Oh, oh, like the, the German CVs. German tech tree CVs? You've got, um... Ooh, that's potentially gonna hurt. You've got, um, a variety of carriers that have secondaries, but horrible aerial detection. Specifically, like, the Richthofen and the Emmelmann. So they have actually better surface detection than they do aerial detection. It's kind of a lark. Oh, well, that could have been a kill. He wasn't turning. Top speed for Ryuzhou planes is, um, 
154 on Legends. How far are we? I guess I can get the hull upgrade. Helps rudder if nothing else. Only a lot to go. 130k. How do you steer your planes? Um, uh, WASD on the keyboard. W is forward. Uh, have you ever played a first person shooter? It's WASD. Um, S is a hard turn left. D is a hard turn right. So hard turn left. D is hard turn right. This is basically like holding the rudder on a surface ship. Because the way the planes work is actually similar to having the rudder. Like, the rudder engages all the way left. The rudder moves over, engages all the way right. It just has a, a fairly rapid rudder shift time, kind of. I don't know. Um, and then you've got W, which makes it go faster. While well, you've got your engine boost. You burn engine boost, go faster. You have S, which uh, is going to be an air brake, goes slower. Again, also burns engine boost. And then there's the mouse. So if you look off at something, you'll notice the planes don't respond. But if you get close, you have a fine, fine tuning. So you can fine tune your aim with the mouse. That was actually pretty lucky. We just kind of derped into this dude. Um, slam on the brakes, cut on in. Maybe we have this dance. a plane but we do get to shoot whatever um okay fubuki is wounded uh the fine tuning is going to be much more you know kind of logarithmic i guess so like if you have just a very very small movement it's a very small amount if you pull it off to the side it, it ends up turning into a pretty hard turn but once you break like 30 degree angles it'll break free and it won't continue turning So basically, you use the keyboard if you want a hard turn, otherwise you, you find control with the mouse. I might get a fighter here. I don't know where in here he is, so... Good hits. Oh, he bailed. Fuck that! Um... We might go in on... Okay. Luki's getting hurt. It looks like he's about to be hydroed. Uh, Raz, I'm heading in that direction. Looks like you already caught him on hydro, though. Pop the engine boost. Okay, cool. So... Let's try to get out and away from these guys and see if we can drop a fighter consumable for spotting. Nope. Cannot. All stations, concentrate fire on the target. Uh, AP bombs don't work very well open water. These guys are moving in a pretty big group. Leander's going to juke. Nuremberg's going to juke. So we'll go back to rockets and try to work on some cruisers. Autopilot mode enabled. I need to be more aggressive with my hull positioning because we have very low detection. Triple battleship is kind of a lot. Yeah, when you're learning how to shoot with CVs, co-op is your friend. When you get sick of co-op, because you'll you'll finish tier four fairly quickly. When you get sick of co-op, uh, when you get sick of co-op, you can, uh, you know, you go up to tier six, play around for a little bit, and then start to play in. Um, that felt wrong. Is my ping freaking out? 
you can start to play operations. So we can probably clock him here. And then we... There is something going on with the ping. Our ping is taking the lead. Get back! By thunder. Affirmative. You only have the tier four, it's a Langley? Yeah, I mean, that's where you... So, if you look below the channel... I just, this needs to stop. Um, if you look below the channel, there's a, a section called CV 101 that should lead you to a, um, that should lead you to a highly commentated video in the Langley. Uh, it's going to talk about what each armament does, what the reticle means, movement, speed, all sorts of stuff. There's a lot of content there. I might be able to hit the Pensacola. I think we have to go for her. He's turning though. Catch this one. Maybe both. We get both. He's dead. Hey. Destroyed an enemy cruiser. Destination reached. Auto Do something with the DD. No, probably not. God bless dispersion. Keep some lit for the moment. Fighter airborne. Maybe this one. Maybe. Yeah, that hits. Cool. Puts him pretty low, I think. Yeah, he's got like a sliver. Oh, is he flooding? Hey. Alright, work on the Nurnberg. Autopilot mode enabled. You have a Pensacola with a defensive fire consumable. Do you really have to spin and turn to keep from getting hit? Well, Pensacola is a heavy cruiser, so she's able to take some hits. But I mean, obviously you don't want to take damage if you can avoid it. But, um... Yeah, uh, it just comes down to positioning, comes down to what you're trying to do. So he has, his fighter is warmed up now. It's like he's got defensive fire on. We'll strike into this. We lose probably a plane coming in, maybe two. And we get to shoot before the fighter kills us all. Our victory is in sight. Hmm. Nuremberg's looking at two battleships, so we should be able to torp in that angle. Provide anti-aircraft fire support. Pensacola is not a bad ship. She is not. She was used uh, fairly extensively in clan battle stuff. The highest tier cruiser you have. I think she's got good guns. She's got a lot of armor. Pretty resilient, uh, pretty resilient ship. Could, we could bomb the Fuso. I'm gonna turn off this way. Try to come in from that angle. Cause I can see that it's already turning. We may have to bomb this after. Because I don't really have any more torps. I have some. Doom, 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 doom. Furious really blocked you. Furious is, well, the British line is actually an advanced line. Um, it doesn't seem like it would be, but by everything that I could say or see about it, it's an advanced line, which is sort of weird. Um, because the pen on it, well, for the Furious, the pen's actually pretty okay, which is kind of nice. But um, the British line in general is about kind of knowing your targets, knowing what you can do to them, how you figure out how it all works. 
Do you think uh, COTS will have CVs again at one point? No. I think if there's going to be a tournament that includes CVs, it will probably also include subs and end up being its own thing. That would be my guess. I think COTS has established itself as a tournament that does not have carriers and will probably continue to be that way. And if, uh, if you're going to see carriers in competitive play, it's going to be a separate thing. That's my guess. Could be wrong though, but that's my guess. Because if they get like a large sub population and subs aren't added into COTS, they might just make the decision to add both of them at the same time, but I don't know. Do I have a Discord? Yes, if you uh, type exclamation Discord, there should be a link, or you can just look below the stream and you should be able to see one there. Battle starts. We have some very talented players on our Discord, but as a result of that, we also have some very... Hmm... The more experienced you get with the game, the more old hat it is, the more veteran you are, um, the more spicy you can be when talking about it. So, you know, if you're a newer player, don't be afraid to let people know that you're a newer player because some more experienced players tend to be pretty exasperated when people don't know the answers to this or that or thus or whatever. It's okay to be a new player. It's, it's good to be in a, a place where you're asking questions. Just gonna warn you that there are some people on the Discord that are so experienced that they're hard to, they're kind of obnoxious at times. So as long as you know that going in, you should be okay. Remember the Farazel 7 CV tournament? Uh, I never actually watched that, but I've heard about it. I totally read this dude's name as Pinata, which I think is kind of hilarious. Spinetta, it was. Come on, hard turn here. Might lose the plane coming in. Might not, actually. Drop the fighter last second. Fighter, fighter airborne. You hate people that yell at new players? Makes you sad? Yeah, um, I mean, I run a teaching stream. So, mode you're going to encounter newer players that have questions, uh, don't have experience about stuff, so you do need to have patience with that. But, I am a high-level player. You'll have a lot of people that'll dispute me on that. <laughs> but, I am a high-level player. I'm in a competitive clan. Um, I, I actively participate in competitive stuff and answer competitive questions. So there are more experienced folks that do, you know, hang out on the Discord and talk all the time and share their opinion on this, that, and the other thing. Um, which is good, because we can have... I think really good discussions about mechanics and concepts, which can be really useful. I mean, it's cool to have uh, a good group of peers to be able to run your ideas off of that are also kind of experts in the game, or expert in the thing you're trying to do. He's dead. But sometimes the cost of that is that chat can be kind of rough sometimes with people that are pretty spicy over this or that or whatever, so... If you're a newer player and you're like, cool, I want to learn on his channel, I want you to. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions, and if somebody's kind of douchey, don't be afraid to tell them, buddy, I'm new, back off. If they don't respect it, I'll kick them. So hopefully they do respect it. Cleveland's a problem. Seven is very nice. I like seven. You got him to take out the marble head? <laughs> you come to me and I'll ban him. <laughs> yeah, newbie set up the server, so he's got all those, like, 
Leap Ninja hack privileges and stuff. He can make it happen. I'm I'm too much of a softy, you know. People can fuck with me and I'll accept it for what it is, but when people fuck with other people, oh buddy, I get pissed. It does not go well. Um, I am much, much more defensive of other people than I am of myself. Well, it's a Cleveland, so kind of knew that shit was going to happen going in. You'd never played the Marblehead before? It's a challenge to keep it alive, especially in a tier 7 battle. I think the Marblehead is similar to the Omaha, and the Omaha is a gigantic citadel. Um... So the Omaha can be pretty scary to play, but um, a lot of people like the Omaha. She's got torps, which can surprise people, because not a lot of US ships have torps. Um, I do actually kind of like the, the sidewall that the Omaha has, because you can bounce shells. Granted, I mean, you're a big Citadel target, but if you angle, you can bounce shells, so it can work out okay. Turn out this way, swing back in. He keeps turning, he's gonna beach. Do we have another shot here? I don't know if we do. Maybe. Started the attack run so that we have the uh, damage mitigation. Cool. I don't know how we deal with this Cleveland. Autopilot mode enabled. After watching your channel and YouTube, you have improved my CV game. I spammed 150 Lowenheart games. 65% overall, I guess that's win rate, and the last 100 games, 70%. This is compared to your overall 56% win rate. Fuck yeah, dude. That's amazing. That is great to hear. I, I really don't think I can interact very successfully with the Cleveland at all. Oh my god. Yeah, if y'all can cap this, that'd be fucking incredible. Because, like, we are not doing well on the other side at all. <laughs> um, so hopefully you guys can, like, trade smokes back and forth or something and get this cap. Because that's the best chance we have to win right now is uh, y'all th in that cap. Mode disabled. Set a smoke screen. One's going to come back and radar soonish. get a citadel that's cool did not get reset which is great I'll try to keep fighter cover up and keep some ideas on the till end but you guys might want to be on the far side of the cap or maybe behind that island in the south this island maybe so you can't be reset Gonna have the Tullin relit shortly. There we go. Let's see if we can fuck with him. Best case, we get him to turn and stop charging the cap. No, you don't. We need our DDs to win the game for us. Well, he eats one, actually, eats both torps. And he's hard turned away, which is good. And he gets dumpstered. We're now. One minute, no? Is that minute... Fuck. Minute 30... 20 seconds? Something like that. 20 seconds from a win. Ooh. He eats this one. That that felt weird. Ooh, buddy. But it did hit. So we're running this dude off so he can't step on the cap, which is cool. Say no to drugs, sir. And the fighter's gonna keep him lit. We finish in like 10 seconds. Fighter Which airborne. is great. Because there's two Massachusetts alive on the other team, and that's scary as fuck. And they're like 
very high health. <laughs> Say no to drugs. No Massachusetts today. Earn credits. How far does this have to go? Holy crap. That's quite a bit. Great plays. You are amazing. Great plays. Thank you kindly. We got a compliment. All right. Let me show the captain for the Ryu show. The equipment. The plain one, the plain one. Torp speed, because there's really nothing else to pick. And torp health, because it's the big thing the Ryojo has. For the commander, more faster, healthier. Base 9 point build for every CV in the game. Additional points in torpedo throughput, because Japanese torpedoes are a big source of the damage. Sight stab, to help the bomb aiming, so you can drop from a higher height, get citadels, and also to help with the torp aiming. Um, additional planes, just because they're very useful for spotting and helping and whatever. And then some engine boost. Played Ego and Cots two tournaments ago. Earning credits at low tier with no premium takes a long time. Yeah, I guess so. I just kind of thought after like four and a half hours of playing, I might have gotten, you know, the three million credits needed, but I guess not. You don't earn a lot? Yeah, um, I have a tier 8 premium, the Saipan, that I put a bunch of credit flags and stuff on it, and I can earn like 800 to 1.2 million in a game, so I probably should have done that just to get the credit stuff out of the way. Um, that would have been a good idea, because I think the next grind is a whole bunch of base XP, but since we're doing the regrind stream, it should happen, you know? over today or tomorrow or whatever. So the Vesser is, um, because of the AP rockets, it's not super strong against, what? It's not super strong against destroyers. Want the Kokoli, it's gotta be a DD down here, right? There he is. Ooh, I overflow him. Too bad, sad times. He beached? Does he smoke? He does not. Now he smoked. Go ahead and drop these before the planes murder us. Sure. Random. How you doing? How bad is it? What's the damage? Not. Fighter destroyed. Oh, no. He hit us for 510 damage, so he hit us for something. Alright. I'm over here in uh, Bravo to help you with the Nicholas if you guys want to push with your Hydra or whatever. Of course, you see him already, so. Probably don't need me. But I'll give you a little bit of help. You can go over on the T61, I think. Give some spotting because they have smoke clouds. Fighter airborne. Now, if the Montecucoli is over here, I don't know if we even get to this to shoot it. Because of AA. That's the Montecucoli. 
1300 damage we should probably be able to do well doesn't matter because he did oh fuck shinonome uh i have to deal with that because we don't have a dd over there so that's what i have to do we got a rocket plane over there Mm, battleships we're pretty far back we're not going to be spotted easily so we'll go and we'll do something over here because our dd over here is dead we have a uh, frontline presence frontline presence no frontline presence so this is where we need to pay attention you were surprised to find out nicholas has defensive fire but no speed boost you can't switch it uh i don't know Stations. Why is Reporting he seen? New Mexico? Target. You have a fighter. He's gonna slink back into smoke. Nope, smoke is gone. He doesn't want a beach. Oh, way too low. Way too low. No bueno. Might be able to hit this shot. Not good either. We were doing so well. Slam on the brakes, hard turn. Better. I don't think we get to shoot again. Rushed the shot and it didn't take. Looks like this is all broken. Autopilot mode enabled. Yeah, so they just torped the fuck out of everything. Killed this, killed that. Yeah. Our victory is in sight. Hey serpent. Try to sit at all the cavor. Pens. Damn you, Vesser. Torping me for 3k damage. Our victory How is dare inside. you, sir. One of those might sit. Both of those might sit. Monte Cucoli, a whole bunch of bad guys. Arizona Shinonome is the last pocket of resistance. And that's not for very long. reached. Autopilot mode disabled. I don't know where the Shinonome is. Probably back here? Probably doesn't torp with the Arizona. Emil likely has torp, so the Arizona's time is nigh. I'm already out here, so I'll take a shot. Although I don't even know if our torps will get to him. Maybe. It's probably not enough. He's only got three. I wonder if he's dead. Arizona is healing. That'll probably kill him. OP German Torps? Played so much in terms of base XP, like how many games has this been? Feels like it's been a lot. It's been a lot. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 
17 and 1. Doing pretty good.